Hey everyone, this is Mei Yu, and welcome to Fun Friday. Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. Thank you all so much for your awesome comments, likes, and suggestions for future styles and characters in my recent 10 styles art challenge. I'm glad you enjoyed this, and stay tuned for more. Okay, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different from my usual swap videos like my row swap or style swaps. And some of you have been asking for me to swap the outfits of two different characters. And I was thinking it would be really cool if I took like, for example, a character from one fandom and a character from another fandom and kind of swap their outfits together. But the like the um, the characters themselves, although they're from different fandoms, they have one really important thing in common. And I was thinking it would be fun if I took Elsa and Frozone and swap their outfits because they both have ice powers. Like they both have this, you know, cool pun intended superpower so it'll be really interesting if i put elsa in frozone's outfit his super suit and frozone in elsa's outfit When I was thinking about how I wanted the composition of this piece to look like, I was thinking, you know, okay, so we have these two really, you know, powerful uh, characters and they're both really good in handling their ice powers. And I was thinking, should they, like, it's really fun to think about. It's like, you know, this cool crossover kind of thing. And, you know, would they, I was thinking, would Elsa and Frozen, if they ever met, um, in this universe, in some kind of universe, would they work together or would they be rivals? Would they be really competitive? Would they, I don't know, like have an ice off or like a challenge to see who is the cooler, uh, you know, character? So I was thinking of all these different elements because I didn't just want to draw the two characters standing side by side and, you know, whoop, you switch their outfits and then that's that. I wanted to have something more going on in this piece. So I was, you know, thinking about, you know, what kind of situation would they be in if they did meet together and I was thinking if you know it'll be really cool if they could kind of demonstrate to each other like how their ice powers could be or maybe they could even be you know wanting to team up together to fight some uh, like um, like a really bad villain that required both of them to work together I know it's kind of interesting so I was sketching out these different um, like poses and eventually I came up with this. I think it's kind of cool and yeah, we'll see how this looks like. I think it's really fun. I'm drawing Elsa in various different ways on my channel. And some of you have been asking for part four of my princesses as horror monsters and other characters. So I'm going to try to do something like that in the coming weeks for spooky season. I wanted to have some fun with Frozen's pose, so I, I was thinking about his stance. And, uh, you know, because he's wearing Elsa's, you know, flowing outfit, I really wanted to show off those nice, beautiful, like, uh, fabrics and the flow of the dress and all that, the uh, cape behind him. So I wanted to have him stand like that, showing his wonderful, amazing heels and have that nice swishiness in the dress part and in the cape in the back. I just really like where this is going. And as for Elsa, I have a feeling right now that I'm going to not be so used to seeing Elsa in an outfit like this where, you know, like Frozone's super suit is really uh, form-fitting and there's not a lot of pieces that kind of come out of the main design of the outfit. Like there's no flowy things, there's no, you know, pieces of fabric, uh, you know, by itself. Um, so. You know, like I've always seen, or I've usually seen Elsa in just beautiful gowns with a lot of layers to them, lots of like things going on in her outfit. So for me to draw Elsa in this way, it was kind of refreshing and it was really interesting. I also really like how I have her stance like that as well. It's really like, you know, I think it's befitting her character. It's very strong. It's very like um, dominant. She has a lot of confidence and strength in her. So I really like this.
When I was beginning the coloring process, I was really mindful of the fact that although you know both these characters they have these really well-known blue outfits, like they're really iconic looking, the blues are not very similar. So I was thinking when I when I was coloring、um, Elsa's super suit, I wanted to get that really nice sheen,、uh, like that reflectiveness. In that design as well, because I love how it just flows around the body, and it looks, you know, it makes the character look a lot more real and more dimensional. So I, re- I was really mindful of getting those reflective like highlights on the different parts of the suit, and I also didn't want the blue, like the Frozone blue, to look too similar to the Elsa blue. And you might, you know, I think it's going to be more apparent when I color the. Characters later on. Right now, I'm just building the different layers and trying to get that shine effect going, building up the dimension. But as I color, I wanted to really make sure that these two blues are quite distinctive from each other. I really like how Elsa's outfit is a really nice, different shade of blue. It's a lot more muted. It looks. It it just for me it feels a little more like、um, not so bright and more sophisticated. It's a little more on the violet or cool side of the blue, whereas Frozone's、um, like super suit he is more cyan, more turquoise, more of a warmer blue. So I really like that contrast, and I'm definitely gonna get that in my piece. And speaking of coloring, y'all did it again with your amazing coloring work from my coloring books. I've been collecting this recent batch, like these are just from the last few weeks, and they are all so amazing and inspiring. I'm seeing so many new fans join the May You Art hashtag community on Instagram, and I'm also seeing some amazing fan work in the customer Amazon reviews on my various coloring books and workbooks. Thank you all so much for inspiring not only me but all the other fans who are looking at how you finish my line art. I love to point out the different ways and techniques I've seen from you, like you know how some of you like to use colored pencils with gel pens. That's always a great and creative way to mix your art supplies, and others like to use different pens and markers. I especially love how you blended and shaded different areas, like the faces and hair in the coloring pages. And some of your work remind me of like official anime art. Like that is so amazing. Some other fans like to color quickly with lots of energetic strokes, while others color at a more relaxed pace with the strokes blending into each other more. They're all so unique in their own special ways, and I just want to thank all of you for sharing what you've created. I've also noticed some fans have started coloring again after some time off for the summer. I'm super happy that you're all doing this in ways that make you feel good. I do believe that the act of creating art, like no matter if you're learning how to draw or creating your own scenes, for example, your own comics, or coloring in my coloring books, all of this can play a great role in de-stressing and you know just relaxing. I know. You know, sometimes it feels like we have so much to do in our lives, and you know, or we have so many worries, and sometimes it could feel overwhelming or frustrating. But you know, I'm glad to know that some fans have told me how much my books have helped them in this way. I also know some fans were coloring through their summer vacations and road trips, and I'm glad you're keeping up your creativity wherever you go. I really do think that art is like a muscle, you know, but in your mind. The more you use it, the more you exercise it, the stronger it'll be. And once you break through to the next level of artistic creativity or skill, like that's yours. Nobody can take that away from you. It's like leveling up in video games. So I'm just super proud of all of you. I also love how some of you are getting creative in different ways with my other books, like my how to draw books and workbooks. I'm glad to know that whatever book I'm creating can help you further your own skills and imagination. In case you haven't yet, you can see how this amazing group of fans are turning my line art in my different coloring books into their own, like living, breathing artistic creations on the May Art hashtag on Instagram and in the various book reviews on Amazon. 
I also love the fact that this online family is growing. Like every time you post your creation, someone else could see it and they might want to try that out too. And then th in that case, they can inspire more people and it just grows. Some fans told me they were gifted my books from their friends or family members and now they can't stop creating. That is so awesome and so heartwarming. The link to my books on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon is in the video description. I've made over 80 books including coloring books in different sizes and formats, also how to draw books, workbooks, and more. Also my ebooks can also be found on Apple and Kobo. All the links are below. Just a quick update, I've released the paperback versions of my different how to draw books including the fall editions of Draw One Girl and Draw One Boy in 20 Outfits and Draw One Eye in 20 Ways Female. New workbooks where you get to design your own outfits on ready-made templates are also out and these are the fall editions so you get to draw and color right on the body templates. These are great for back to school, after school art activities, or just casual doodling and learning anywhere. I'll be releasing more paperbacks in the coming weeks, so my ebooks will have their paperback companions on my main bookstore on Amazon. Check them out in the link below and happy drawing! This is way funnier with their faces. At first I was thinking if I should include like the headwear along with the outfit, but then I was thinking I'd really like to have just, you know, Elsa, like Elsa's head, Elsa's face, and Frozone's head and Frozone's face on, you know, their own bodies. And it's just the outfit themselves, like the neck down, what they're wearing. That's the thing that changes. So I'm really glad I stuck to this because I do think that visually the characters, like the faces look so iconic. It's just so startling and so interesting to see them wearing each other's clothes. So I really like how this turned out. Okay, fan theory time. So in this alternate universe, what could have happened that would have brought Elsa and Frozen together? Maybe, like, why are they wearing each other's clothes, for example? Is that important to defeat the bad guy? Or are they competing against each other? I have no idea, but I know you're all so creative. Let me know your thoughts and fan theories in the comments. I love to read them. Also, smash the like button if you want to see part 2 of this kind of challenge and subscribe in case you haven't yet so you won't miss my future videos. Turn on the bell notification so you won't miss out the next time I release a new video. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been an awesome time, really fun challenge, and I'll see you next time. I want to thank everyone who got my different coloring books and various how to draw books. I'm glad that my art can help inspire you to keep up your creativity, relax, create something you can call your own, and build your skills at the same time. 